Alright guys, Touch Corbett back again today, have been enjoying your day so far and today we're going to talk about mouse and keyboard versus controller. Relatively recently there was some discussion from Scump and Envoy on the, um, the Optic podcast and they were discussing, look, if keyboard and mouse comes into effect in the coming years of Call of Duty play, will controller players still be able to compete? This has been a big discussion, especially on the Warzone side these previous, uh, well, eight or so months since Warzone came out. The fact that, look, okay, keyboard and mouse players are very, very good at this game, the long range fights they're absolutely dominant in, but in a close range competitive Call of Duty combat CQC situation, will it be the same? Will they be able to keep up in terms of movement, especially without aim assist? And could controller players still dominate the arena if mouse and keyboard comes into effect? This I think was a big worry for a number of people when it was initially announced we were going to PC. This may just be a stepping stone to allowing keyboard and mouse. But if keyboard and mouse does come into effect within like three years or so from that initiation, how many of our, well, controller players are still going to be left in the league? That's certainly something which I think is going to be a relative relatively no number, but then maybe some of the pros aren't quite convinced that it will be too easy for the mouse and keyboard and players to come in and dominate the Call of Duty scene. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much for doing that. This from the Call of Duty League back in September then. The 2021 season has officially begun. New ways to compete in coming. Talking about how, look, for the upcoming season, it's going to be on PC, but with exclusive use of controllers for the upcoming season, which, um, okay, it doesn't really say anything either way, but it could be argued that, like, they're saying for the upcoming season as opposed to, um, you know, for eternity, right, forever, because, um, well, they might be switching it out at some point and allowing players to come in with a keyboard and mouse. That's certainly been a big discussion, a big, uh, well, concern, I think, for a number of players, because we love our um, game on console, in my opinion, and, uh, well, what really makes the Call of Duty scene special is the players and the, the characters and the personalities that we have within the community, really the community more generally. If they were to allow mouse and keyboard players to also compete in competitive play, I think that it wouldn't initially have a devastating impact, but within a couple of years, I can certainly see that the vast majority of our professional players can no longer compete. However, some of the pro players, the likes of Scumpled on as we're going to look at here, do not necessarily believe that would be the case, and believe in a lot of situations, mouse and keyboard players will actually struggle against controllers in very certain situations, but maybe they do have a fair point indeed, so I'm very intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. As Bryce says around the time, it might just be a matter of time until the CDL allow mouse and keyboard to get in. Although controller does keep it even in the crossplay side, lots of money on the table as well for keyboard and mouse potentially, which is certainly something I'm sure Activision Blizzard sales team have their eyes on here, potentially getting all the sponsors for peripherals, the likes of Logitech and Corsair and this type of stuff that potentially might come in from um, well, from other PC esports. They might be able to come into Call of Duty as well, and probably something which the CDL is thinking about. But hopefully this doesn't happen anytime soon, because to me it's it's a massive risk, right? And as Easy Mac says at the time, like keyboard and mouse shouldn't be in pro play, should stick to controller on PC. COD is known for that. 90% of the player base use controller. We don't even have a good anti-cheat, which is what we were talking about here earlier today. I love watching mouse and keyboard on all these games. We have a great opportunity, and this is really what I agree with. We have a great opportunity to stay unique and use what 90 to 95% of the COD player base uses. Call of Duty is the premier console esports, and if it became keyboard and mouse or controller, you know, my expectation is probably keyboard and mouse starts to proliferate over time and then Call of Duty loses its luster and what really makes it a special esport in my opinion. However, it is certainly possible this doesn't go how we might expect it to and a number of controller professionals can still compete at the high level and well as Scump says at the time, you better hope it doesn't go to mouse and keyboard too because uh, yeah we've got Envoy who used to keyboard back in the day and he mentioned this in his clip back in like the Black Ops 3 days when he wasn't particularly well known online he used to do some keyboard and mouse stuff on these um, in these online tournaments you can use like a Zim to um, well actually use a keyboard keyboard and mouse and I don't think he was using aim assist on it or maybe he was or something I'm not really sure but it's certainly interesting to hear Scump and Envoy's thoughts here on how traditional Call of Duty players on a controller may be able to still compete especially in terms of the movement size if keyboard and mouse comes into effect. Vonderhaar's back, Treyarch's back, I think that we have a very good line of communication just even outside of the CDL for that uh, but in, in, in that perspective do you think that the ability to to connect your controller how long do you think that's going to be before somebody switches over to that? Because there is talk that there, it might go from controller to allow cross multi multi device uh, opportunities. I honestly, I mean, we, we I don't think people. I don't think people are going to be able to keep up and respawn with mouse and keyboard. Just yeah. like pro movement, like you watch like Warzone players play Warzone, like they can kill, you know, the Randalls. Once they get hit with a slide cancel, it's like, and I feel like that movement. If there is advanced movement, it's really hard for mouse and keyboard to keep up. 
I mean, I, I keyboarded like, and I played like varying tournaments while I was doing it. And just even like you, I mean, you have to play on like a slow sense. Cause I mean, you gotta be accurate, especially you're playing against like the pros or whatever. If you do a 180 or a 360, like you might run out of mouse space. You might not be ready for the next gunfight or like the and constant like, action. And there's all these lanes yeah. and I and just, you're gonna have no aim assist. Like aim assist is huge. There's like, not really a respawn PC game, is there? Team not. Fortress, Quake. yeah, Quake. But that's true. But I don't know. I think uh, that was such a but massive. Those are, different. Uh, those, those are like different those, styles. I, Overwatch, of I guess. Yeah, because if you think oh. it's so much on yeah, aiming, I guess sort though. Of. Right. Like, I feel yeah. like hot is so much on movement. If you're like, if you're feeling, if you have clunky movement that day, you're probably not going to be at your best. Yeah. You know, just well, like I was also going to say, like, on, the, on, the, on those arenas, like, if you look at how massive those things were and the verticality and jumping, mm -hmm. like, it gave you, a, it wasn't a, a, an enclosed not map a, yeah, in which, yeah. like, you don't know where, who's doing what. Right. Right. Especially people at your level or better that, that, that can be doing that. I mean, we'll have to see. I feel like PC favors more like longer range engagements, whereas consoles like all close range and i mean call of duty is a lot of the time mostly right in your face you know yeah. trying and to anything, snap i don't shell the pc player long range <laughs> i don't shell the sniper you know <laughs> that's true he's useless i mean we'll have to see who knows you know we're just talking off what we think you never know i mean someone could come in and yeah shut us all down and uh, there's definitely people out there I'm that out could come job. in and take pro spots with mm -hmm. a keyboard and mouse yeah but like the, the top, chances that the top tier that pros all the know. controller players get wiped is slim to none yeah that would yeah. be fun to watch. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not see, gonna. Yeah, I want. I, I hope that what happened with Warzone, where we see all this integration of, of different streamers and different mouse and keyboard players playing with yeah. the COD players yeah. we've known for so long. Yeah, I hope that happens in in, in COD or in a uh, Cold War. So it must be said that a lot of our professional players are very talented with a number of different controller potential inputs. Right, we've seen a few of these guys use keyboard and mouse in terms of playing Warzone and other games as well, and are very talented with it. However. Can a lot of these players that are in the league for the 2021 season, if it did go to um, keyboard and mouse potentially at the end of it, how many of these players would still be able to compete? Right? Would any of them move over to keyboard and mouse and still be able to compete? Or would they still use a controller? Certainly very intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below here because, um, yeah, from my perspective, I guess really see their argument, right? In terms of the movement, in terms of up close stuff, it does seem very difficult indeed to track, especially with uh, moving players, especially with the lack of aim assist that you will have if you are using a um, you know, keyboard and mouse of course so there's definitely two sides of the argument in the respawn game modes they reckon it would be okay and that really is the question to me right like in search and destroy are you just going to get crushed a player is actually going to maybe even use keyboard and mouse in search and destroy and then switch over to controller for respawn i mean that's possible right like in respawn you've got to have your head on a swivel the whole time you're constantly taking gunfights getting up close and personal slide cancelling all over the shop where search and destroy is a little bit more um, you, know, you take it a little bit more step by step it's more about long range engagements potentially in certain situations getting a pick and then moving up the map and taking that map control with you and that kind of stuff does definitely benefit i think keyboard and mouse in that central like imagine you're playing miami and you've got a guy using a sniper rifle with the um you know with keyboard and mouse you're just never gonna you're never gonna be able to cross anything right because he's just gonna kill you every single time and the aim assist doesn't even matter in that sense and the same thing really where you can just get absolutely cross mapped i imagine by pretty much any weapon in the game if they're using keyboard and mouse with that fine motor control that enables them to do but if you're slide canceling against this guy up close Close, he might have a much more difficult time, especially without the aim assist, that uh, you don't get on keyboard and mouse. So I can certainly see both sides of the argument. I do wonder if that's even a possibility, right? That at some point players even decide to use both, some in search, some in respawn. But um, yeah, that's the problem. And as Hitch was kind of hinting at, be cool at some point to see some of these guys like Huskers and Co. I think Huskers was even a pretty prominent search and destroy star in Call of Duty scene back in the day. That was like a big name, um, you know, Warzone keyboard and mouse guy. And you know, who knows? If he came into professional Call of Duty and was using the keyboard and mouse, what would happen, right? Would the pros be able to compete with him in the respawns? Would um, you know, would they completely destroy him in search and destroy? What would happen? Would uh, you know, would the pros get absolutely crushed in all the search and destroys, as Nature famously said, or whoever? Search and destroy wins championships, right? It can be the most important game modes. So if mouse and keyboard players were just going to dominate every search and destroy and maybe split the respawns, then still mouse and keyboard seems to be the way to go. But yeah, certainly a question mark to me. Call of Duty is all about the personalities. It's all about uh, the characters and the rivalries and the drama that we get within the scene. If we brought in keyboard and mouse players and it was like some of the North American Counter-Strike pros that weren't quite good enough to make it in CS, weren't quite good enough maybe to make it in Valorant, they all just came into Call of Duty and started flooding the markets. And um, yeah, maybe we don't have the most entertaining eSport that we used to have. So certainly something I hope Activision doesn't employ, even if some of the
the pro players here think that it probably would be okay and they could still compete. Maybe that's wishful thinking, I'm not really sure. And I certainly don't think it's a risk that we should be taking here in the Call of Duty scene going forwards. But uh, yeah, not for this season. Maybe next season the CDL decide to say something about this. Just to finish off the video with a few things, thought this is interesting. So, uh, well, Zero was scrimming with the London Royal Ravens against the New York Subliners, who was scrimming with Hydra from, well, he was playing from France. And Zero had 41, anyway, he went 41 and 21 here on this um, in this scrim. Pretty impressive from across the pond. And Clayster says, so, you know, Zero says 150 ping, Clayster says 180 ping, but Hydra in this one goes 34 and 23. But, um, yeah, Saint says, like, EU lag compensation is uh, honestly nuts. Alex was frying most maps from the UK last year before he moved, of course, on the Minnesota Rocker, of which Saint is the head coach of that team. But Zmarky says, like, it's game dependent. Some games have absolutely been tragic for the lag comp. Ghost, for example, extremely fast time to kill games are usually horrendous. And this also was pretty funny for Method. So Hollow tweets out, of course, a player on the Optic Gaming Los Angeles at the end of last season. No wonder we can't see over the bushes on Cartel. Drowning in four foot of water in the pool on Miami. So as you can see here, this is the four foot line of the pool of Miami. And W, yeah, he's drowning underwater. And Method says, look, now it all makes sense. Phase is fine because they can personally relate to the game. Of course, a BZ and Sib, known for being shorter than your average professional Call of Duty player. But yeah, certainly not short on their in-game ability. Intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoy this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the professional Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.